الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد we are continuing our study to the work entitled Prophetical in the Yaf, entitled The Stories of the Prophets, as has been authored by Abu Sida Ismail Ibn Sadiq, as he has passed in the year 774, and will be guiding on what now is the 21st day of Rajab of the year 1442 and Rajidi coinciding with what is also what we believe to be the 5th of March of the year 2021 and Odamada. And in our previous sitting, we offered an introduction to this work. We also discussed the framework and how this particular book has been set up and what our expectations are from the study of this work and then we entered into the work itself so in brief this particular work it covers the stories of the prophets from the time of adam all the way through the time of isa and the way that the author approaches this work he exhaust first the verses as it relates to a particular prophet or a particular story. Thereafter, the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in accordance with what is most reliable, uh, all the way through that which is less in its reliability. And uh, ultimately, he will culminate in historical account from the Israelite narration. And along the way, if there are varying views among scholarship on a particular matter, he will then discuss those varying views among scholarship and will often uh, mention his conclusion on those particular discussions. So in our previous sitting, we entered into the onset of the story of Adam and his Salah. And we have reached the verse as it states here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, the glorious and the exalted, he has also said, Fear of, meaning of the earth, we created you. Into it, we will return you, and from it, we will bring you out once more. So we're going to follow these pronouns briefly. Our Lord states, Fear of, we created you. We here is a reference to who? To Allah, the better with the We're going to come back to this. Fear of, we created you. Into it, we will return you. It is what? The earth. And from it, we will bring you out once again. From it, it is what? Good. From it, we will bring you out once again. This is when? In the time. In the time. Good. So the statement we hear. Yes. Isn't there was a resurrection up in the time? Point. You're on fear. Um, you meant by that? Yeah. The same. Okay, good. You're on fear. Good. The the day of resurrection. How do we understand we here? Typically, we utilize we in plurality. So a person would say we concerning all of us that are here because there are several of us that are here. So are we saying that our Lord is the Lord that is plural? How do we understand we here? Okay, Siva says the world. Yes? Yeah? You say the same thing? The world. Our sister said? I don't understand we here. You all said it was referring to Allah, but Allah is how many deities? He's one. But the reference here is we. So how do we reconcile that? Our sisters think what? Okay. 
Royal, 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 what is the royal we? It's singular. Okay, in what context? How do we use it? Brothers and sisters, how would we explain this royal we? If there was someone who was questioning this, and this is this is fairly typical amongst semi-educated Christians. When, when they are when they are speaking to the full act, um, some of them might say that we here is a reference to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is the evidence for the Trinity within the full act. So this is proving that this is proving that they're right. So then how will we explain it? Yes. It signifies sovereignty. Okay, good. Good. So, one more. Um, let's look at it this way. If we were in guest, kind of signifies the magnificence of Allah, and it signifies, I hate to use these, sorry, presidents, but when they say we won the war, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't fight. Mm -hmm. You know, all the rulers of the world would say we. They won't say I did something. They would say we. Excellent. But Excellent. Allah is saying we. I used to think that it was referring to him as well as the angels mm. helping him on doing their service. But it's the magnificence of the law. Okay, good. So everyone that has answered the part correct. Worldly, uh, sovereignty, magnificence. Um, Example, if we were in discourse and I were to say to you, how are we doing today? What do you understand from that? Good, right, how are you doing today? Even though that was saying we, but we are extolling you and magnifying you, even though you are a single person, we're speaking to you as though you are greater than just being a single person, even though you're one. We mean by that you, right? Or like Sheikh Hamza is referring to, we may find, for example, in legal documentation that the country is based upon, you may see the phraseology, we the people. But we the people um, are not necessarily the ones who wrote that, a singular body. One government wrote that particular document, for example. Okay, good. Now, throughout the whole act, we find that our Lord referred to himself with both the first person singular as well as the first person plural. First person singular, I. First person plural, we. We, us, our. Now, this is what we will not find. We will not find our Lord referring to himself in the third person plural. Doesn't it just stop us that? He will never refer to himself as they, them, or their. That's not there. Okay. So whenever our Lord is referring to himself in the first person singular and or even the third person singular, who up, he, every single time when you look to the context of the verses, this is signifying his what Daniya? This is signifying his oneness. Yet every time when we see him referring to himself in the first person plural, we us our, the context of the verse will be signifying his uh, his ta'bib. It will be extolling him or magnifying him in some way because of what is occurring in the verse. So because of what is being stated in the verse. Because of what he has done, he is so magnificent and so great that he fills up the entire of the word in a plural usage, even though it is a singular usage. Right? This is the role we that you are speaking about. Good. Moving forward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Lord and the Exalted also says, And indeed we created man from dry clay of altered mud and the jinn. We created before from the smokeless flame of fire. 
And remember when your Lord said to the angel, I am going to create a human being from dried clay of altered black mud. So when I have fashioned him in due proportion and breathed into him, Adam, the souls I created for him, then fall down to him in prostration. So already, we see that Adam was created by the a lot easy. What's also stated here is we created before, we created from before the smokeless flame of fire, right? And the jinn, we created from before the smokeless frame, uh, flame of fire. From before what? The jinn were created before what? Before Adam. Before Adam. So this is already indicating to us that before humanity existed on the earth, who was present? The gym. Good. So when I fashioned him in due proportion and breathed into him, the soul which I created for him, then fall down to him in prostration. So the angels prostrated, all of them together, except at least. He refused. To be amongst the procreate. Good. So this verse thus far seems to be indicating that Iblis was from the Malaika. That Iblis was from the, from the angels. Because the verse 6, so the angels prostrated all of them together except Iblis. Except Iblis seems to be an exception to the action of the angels in prostrate as though he was from this. So then do we understand from this that it believes is from the Malaika, that he is from the jinn, or he is from the angel, or he is from another species altogether. What do you understand from this, and why do you understand it from this this way? Read it again. Okay, let's read it again. So the angels procreate. Angels, all of them together, except the belief, he refused to be amongst the procreate. So the belief is from what species? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's what that is. So I'm saying that that exception right there, except the belief, automatically tells you that he's not from the angels. That he's not from the angels. Yeah, that automatically tells you if you understand the angels. Yeah, the verse says, speaking to the angels in context. Yeah, but when you, when you read up and study the angels, the angels are, the, do not have the ability to disobey a law. Good, good. Keep going. The rest of us, we say yes. Well, the gen, before Adam came, the gen was obeying a law just like the angels was obeying a law. So they was all together. That's my understanding. They were all together. Right. Okay, good. We're going to come with it. Inshallah soon. Keep going. The rest of us were saying in context here, it seems to be suggesting that it releases from the eight. Seems to be. So the rest of us are saying the jinn. We're saying the jinn for what? When this verse seems to be pointing us in a different direction. Yes. Most of us we're saying that the keep least in this particular case is from the gen because we know he's from the gen from other from other texts and other things. But from the context of that, that ayah itself, if you took it only in context of that ayah, it would give the indication that he at least was from the from the angel. Good. Never. And then it also doesn't um, explain where were they all together. It just says all of them together. It is not telling you. It's not without information there for you to decide whether he's amongst the angels. You know, to say that he's amongst the angels. Good. Good. So academically, here's the lesson. When we are approaching an academic issue, we do not draw a conclusion solely on one evidence. We do not draw a conclusion solely on one scripture. The, the proper method 
even though a text may be indicating a particular thing, we would then look at other texts that we have available to us. And once we've examined all the texts we have available to us, we then look at all of it inside of that context. And not what the verse is stating alone by itself. So like Sister Dejma is indicating, we know from other scripture that the angels do not have the ability to disobey Allah. So if Iblis is disobeying Allah, this would be indicating that perhaps he is not of the angels. Or, like Sheikh Presley mentioned, we know uh, from other scripture that he's from the jinn, like the first of God, and Amir of jinn. He was of the jinn. This is a simple example, but in our approach to the faith at large, this is what we do. Whenever we are looking for an answer to a question, whenever we are looking for a ruling on a matter, we don't just look at one verse or one hadith and say this is the end all be all until we have looked at all of the texts and then based on what all the texts are saying, then come to a conclusion or categorize things or understand the nuance of the particular issue. Good. He said, meaning of law, oh Iblis, what is the matter with you that you are not with those who prostrate? Iblis said, I'm not the one to prostrate myself to a human being whom you created from dried clay of altered black mud. So now Iblis is presenting his evidence to Allah for disobeying Allah. His reasoning, well, firstly, his evidence here is excellent. He's utilizing intellect as an evidence in front of Allah. So what do we understand from his reasoning? Where's the strength coming from in his reasoning here? His observation, go ahead. Because this is his reasoning, his evidence to Allah why he's not frustrated, why he's not obeying Allah. From where he's standing, he's, he's proposing strength in his argument from where? Where's it coming from? What he understands of the earth? Keep going, what about it? It's lowly. Good, it's lowly. Good. So from where he's standing from, from an intellectual standpoint, dirt has no value. Because the human being, Adam in this case, is created from, from that. And he is created from, from fire, if he's of the jinn, yes? So then his reasoning to him is that fire is superior to dirt. So because fire is superior to dirt, I cannot lower myself to place myself in a state of humiliation beneath something as lowly as dirt. What's wrong with that argument? Yes. He's made the he's, he's uh, determination that one thing is better than another, as opposed to being instructed to do what is the best and what is not. Excellent. Excellent. So he's made this determination himself from his own reason that fire is better than, than surface earth. Good. And he is presenting this to the one that created the fire and the earth and brought light from both. So then he is presenting this without the authority to do so. Now, if Allah has revealed to him that that is the reality, then perhaps he would have had some, some more strength in his argument. But even then it will be limited because the reality is that the Lord has given you an order and you have refused to obey the order. Okay. He responds, Allah says, then you get up from here. For verily you are cursed. And verily the curse shall be upon you till the day of recompense. Iblis said, O oh my Lord, give me the respite till the day they will be resurrected. So now, even in Iblis' arrogance, even in what led him to disbelief, because arrogance ultimately ultimately leads to cover, ultimately leads to disbelief. He still is cognizant of the rububiyah of Allah. 
he is still cognizant and he's not in denial concerning Allah's lordship. He's not in denial that Allah is the one that deserves to be worshipped. He's not in denial concerning that reality. He's just refusing to do it himself from this point forward. So even in Kuba, even in arrogance, even in denial, he still understands that he has to go to Allah and make dua to Allah to be allowed to disobey him further in the tax of You follow? Meaning, regardless of how far we are off the beaten path, if the police in this state can still have enough honor, uh, still have enough certainty in Allah, that you will still make dua to him. How much more so you and I, regardless of how bad we perceive our situation to be? Okay. If we said, Oh my Lord, because you misled me, I shall indeed adorn the path of error for them on the earth, and I shall mislead them, except your chosen slaves among them. So now, he's of the jinn. He has free will. He doesn't take full responsibility. He states to Allah, you misled him. Not taking full responsibility for his own actions. Allah said, this is the way which will lead straight to me. Certainly you should have no authority over my servants, except those who follow you of the Hawi, of the deviators. And surely hell is the promised place for them all. Meaning, humanity in the jinn, meaning it believes in those who obey him from the species of humanity and the jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, and remember when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, they prostrated except Iblis. He said, so I prostrate to one whom you created from clay. Iblis said, see this one whom you have honored over me. If you give me respite to the day of resurrection, I will surely seize and mislead his offspring, all but a few. His offspring, his is a reference to whom? Adam, meaning humanity, meaning us. That he will strive to mislead us, and he will be successful in that, except for a few. This is a hadith that comes in the Bukhari and Muslim. And it speaks to when Allah created Adam and he brought all the loins forth out of Adam. Allah then mentions to Adam when all of the souls are present before him. Out of every 1,000, 999 of them will be going to hell. And one of them will be going to the paradise. Good. Allah said, Go, and whosoever of them follows you, surely how will be the recompense of all of you. An ample recompense. And excite any of them who you can with your voice. And assault them with your cavalry and your infantry. Share with them in their wealth and children and promises. But she promises them nothing but defeat. So he can only whisper. The choice to perform the action still rests upon, upon you and I. Verily, my servants, you have no authority over them, and all sufficient is your Lord as a God. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, and remember when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated except Iblis. Good. Refreshing from last week. So Allah ordered the angels in Iblis to prostrate to Adam how many times? One. And it please disobey. So then, in spite of his disobeying, in our obedience to our Lord, we now prostrate twice. We prostrate twice, twice 
because he, he was ordered to prostrate once and refused. So then we prostrate twice in our obedience and submission to our Lord. Sujud, Sajda, prostration is an act of worship. Yes. So then, who do we worship? Allah. Anyone else on top of Allah? No. So then, how is it that the angels and the beliefs are being ordered to prostrate to Adam when prostration is an act of worship? Would that not then be shirk? Would there not then be polytheism or worship of the creation? Good. The angels are being ordered, along with the beliefs, to prostrate to Adam. Prostration is an act of worship. Right? We only prostrate for the sake of the law. So then, in that act of prostration to Adam, is that not church? Is that not quality? Is it least right? I'm not prostrating because I'm not worshiping other than you. I'm not going to give it church. Is it least right here? So how do we, how do we? They're commanded by the law. Hitherto. To prostrate. To prostrate. Ergo, you know. But whatever Allah commanded them, it wasn't in that context. It wasn't in the context of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't, it can't, it can't, it doesn't, it can't coexist. Okay, good. So they ordered, they ordered the prostrate, but it's not working. No. Yeah. It is worship. It's an act of obedience. Adam is just the Kibla, just as the just as the Kaaba is the Kibla for us. We are told to prostrate toward the Kaaba. So you can say to the Kaaba, but we're not actually prostrating to the Kaaba as it being the thing we're prostrating for. We're prostrating for Allah, but to the Kaaba. And that's what Adam was. He he least didn't understand that. He lost it in his arrogance. And that's why he made he made that decision of saying, no, he he actually almost took it as a statement of him to be. Doing shit. Mm -hmm. well, he should have just understood that, you know, if he understood correctly, he may have made the right decision along the way. Good, excellent, excellent. It's, it's an act of respect. An act of respect. It's out of respect. It's out of respect. He has more knowledge mm -hmm. because the law gave Adam a lot of knowledge and he asked us then, you know, the angels, what, what is this called? And then, I mean, the angels didn't know the names of things. And Adam did know. This is in the Quran. Good. And he taught Adam the names of everything. Of everything, of all things, right? Okay, good. So we have we have two things happening. Uh on the on the one side of it, you're right, they're not worshiping Adam. On the one side of it, in their act of prostrating to Adam, it is actually their worship of Allah. That's relative to them, that's them worshiping Allah. Why? Because Allah ordered them to do so. And what is worship? Worship is anything that Allah loves and is pleased with. A statement for action. Be it internal or external. So if Allah is ordering them to do this, this is an act that he is pleased with. That's the definition of worship. So then in their obeying him, it is their worshiping, worshiping Allah. Good. They are prostrated to Adam, second point. They're prostrated to Adam now in this act of worship for the sake of Allah. It signifies what? What's the meaning of it? Good. Stephen says Adam is special. Allah created him with his own hand. Good. What I have created with my own two hands. Okay, good. Good. Adam is special now. How? Have more knowledge. Yes, he has more knowledge. Good. In this act of the angels and the beliefs being ordered to prostrate to Adam, this is signifying the superiority of humanity as a species above and beyond the angels and the jinn. When, caveat, when the human being is fulfilling his or her purpose in life. And I've not created the jinn nor humanity except for the express intent of my worship alone. 
So now when the human being fulfills his or her purpose in life, the human being now becomes superior to the angels in the gym. Superior to the angels in the angels in the gym in what aspect? Yes. Worship. Worship. Okay, good. Worship. True. Uh, the easier one here will say, in comparison to the angels, the human being who's fulfilling his own purpose is worshiping. The angels are also worshiping. So if they're both worshiping, how is the human being superior to the, to the angels in this context? Because there are angels that from the time they've been created, they're bowing in record, worshiping Allah. From the time they've been created in prostration, we can't imagine. Right? So then how the human being who obeys or who, who fulfills the purpose of life becomes superior to the angels? The human being is not worshiping the way that the angels worship it. How? Because we got free will. Because we have free will. Excellent. Huh? The jinn have free will. Limited. Uh, limited. Limited free will. Limited free will. Limited. Okay, true. Good. So the angels have to do that. They can't disobey a law. So there's a difference between the individual who, of their own volition, they choose to do something as opposed to the one that is forced or minimally have no other option. Right? So because the human being has the choice and still chooses to, this makes the human being superior. As for the superiority of the human being over the gym, we discussed some of those details uh, last week. Um, therefore, we can also, the human being can become the lowest of the low, as in Guatini, Guazetu, mm -hmm. in that store. Good, good. Also true. Also true. Good. Continuing. So they procreated in temple of belief. He was of the jinn. He has obeyed the command of his Lord. Will you then take him and his offspring as protectors and helpers rather than me, while they are enemies to you? Meaning, if you are taking them, in bliss and his offering as protectors and helpers, then you are emulating those who have disobeyed Allah. You are emulating those who have disbelieved in Allah. You are emulating those who are now errors. So, if you are emulating them, then you may begin to take on some of their same characteristics and arrogance and disobedience and in disbelief. What an evil is the exchange for the polytheists and the wrongdoers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, and indeed we made a covenant with Adam before, but he forgot, and we found on his part no firm will power. And remember when he said to the angel, prostrate to Adam, and they prostrated all except the bleed. He refused. Then we said, O oh Adam, Verily, this is an enemy to you and to your wife. Your wife is? Good. He's a wife. So let him not get you both out of paradise so that you land in misery. So now here we have a new factor. Our Lord is stating, so let him not get you both out of paradise. So this would then seem to be indicating that this exchange is occurring may have occurred in paradise. Okay. Verily, you have a promise of us that you will never be hungry therein, nor naked. And you will not suffer from thirst therein, nor from the sun's heat. Then Shaitan whispered to him, saying, as you said earlier, you can only whisper. Can't make you do anything. O oh, Adam, shall I guide you to the tree of eternity? into a kingdom that never decayed. But they both ate from the tree. And so their private party came manifest to them, and they began to cover themselves with the leaves of paradise for their covering. And Adam disobeyed his Lord and urged. Paul. His least disobeyed, and Adam disobeyed. How is it that the result of Adam is not the same result of the belief? 
He said, take a piece. We picked it. Good. Take cross it. Same thing. What's the question here? Good. So here is the and Adam disobeyed his Lord and earth. His least disobeyed. And now on this verse, Adam has disobeyed. Why is it the end result of Adam the same as the belief? Yes. Because they both disobeyed. The end result is not the same. Correct. Why not? Yes. Yes. At least have permission to. He had permission to be disobedient. Anyway, so uh -huh. his consequences is not I don't know. Yeah. You said intellect? Keep going, how so? Okay, good. Good, good. So the capacity for constructive thought, critical thinking, is one of the characteristics that sets humanity apart from, from the gym. We mentioned some of the qualities they have that we don't have, and some that we have that they don't. One of them is, is critical, critical thinking, critical thinking skills. Good, keep going. Yes. I was gonna say that the same wasn't the same. The same wasn't the same. That's correct. Because good, so all sins now are not equal. All sins are not equal. Good. Take question. I was going back to the repentance. In both cases, Allah gave them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's at least. Why didn't you? Why didn't you prostrate? So he believes could have repented and prospered. Right. right. Corrected his action. He didn't repent. No corrected action. So the same happened with Adam. Stop, but the law gives Adam the same thing. He says, Okay, I told you this is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Why did you listen? <laughs> and Adam right. gives his, ra his rationale mm -hmm. and just say, Oh, surely, my Lord, if you don't guide me, I'll be one of those at all. I'll be in the same situation that Lisa's in. That's right. if you don't guide me. So the repentance is what is what the stimulus to cause Adam to not go the same path. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. The intent. Good, take up this. Well, as Allah is setting up everybody. Allah is setting up Iblis because Allah knew that the jinn is not going to accept Adam. Allah, Allah set that up. And then Allah know, knew that Adam was going to fall. Yeah. With, uh, you know, the, speaking to uh, Adam and Eve, the eat of the tree and stuff like that. Allah knew that. So when Allah tells Adam you punish, and He throws them to the earth, Allah don't say you punish, but let me build the earth first before I cast you down to the earth. Mm -hmm. So Allah is setting all this stuff up, mm -hmm. and also He believes He 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 shows His strength because mm -hmm. Adam ate of the tree. He just obeyed Allah. Mm -hmm. You see, Adam. I mean, He believes. Iblis got a whole lot of control over the people in the world. More people is obeying Iblis now than Allah. So I think Allah set both of these guys up for us to be right here in this earth. We have to work and do a lot of things to get back to heaven. Okay, good. So, so, so to your point, in this act of Iblis, he is attempting to, uh, to display his superiority over humanity. Right. He's still trying to prove his point right. to a law. Right. You follow? So the law ordered him to prostrate due to, due, to, due to the superiority of humanity. If Lisa's trying to prove, no, I'm more superior. Look what I can get him to do. Right. You follow? Okay, good. But now in the in the disobedience of the police, his disobedience is his disobedience is coming from a, coming from a place of can't speak of the wife. It's coming from a place of Akita. It's coming from a place of theology. This is his belief system. He doesn't believe that humanity is superior. That's why he's disobeying. It's an issue of his belief. You follow? 
Whereas in Adam's disobedience, it's coming from a place of desire. So sin or disobedience to a law that is premised upon Akida, premised upon a belief system or theology, can be worse than sin that is premised upon desire. Neither one is right, but one is worse than the other. Okay? Because of the fact that belief, because of the fact that he believes, believes that he is correct, it is difficult to repent from that because he believes he's right. That's his belief. Whereas Adam, I mean, for that, he knew he was incorrect in the action, but he was submitting to his desire in that moment. Right? Because humanity has been created weak in this way. We're inclined towards our desires. We have to fight them. You follow? So in his inclination toward his desire, and in his submission to that, he knew that he was wrong, and he knew that he wanted to be correct with his Lord. So that his immediate action is now to attempt to get back into the same space of obedience and a lost pleasure that he was by way of repentance. As he proceeded in shape of Okay. Then his Lord chose him and turned to him with forgiveness and guidance. Why? Because the sins are different. They're not of the same power. And he needs strokes to correct it by way of repentance. Okay. Repentance meaning. You say you're sorry, and that's repentance. How does it work? Change the behavior. Good. So in repentance, you have remorse. Right? The actual term for it is contrition. Right? That's the academic theological term. Right? And never. So you feel bad about what you did. One, no particular word. But you feel bad about what you did. Two, you stop doing what you did. Three, as Sister Nesma is alluding to, you make a commitment, you have resolved to not return back to it. Do we see Adam following these three steps? He definitely felt bad about it. He definitely stopped doing it. He didn't do it, he didn't do it again. And he had resolved within himself to not do it again thereafter. That's repentance. So you started to write the Bible. Now, this doesn't negate, though, that there still may be consequences to our actions even though we may repent, and Allah may forgive us for what we've done. But there still may be consequences. There are still cause and effect that is taking place. So he said, Allah, get you down from it. Get you down from it, from paradise. All to the earth. So get you down from paradise to the earth seems to indicate that relative to the earth, paradise is, is above, is up. Oh. Being enemies to one another. Then if there comes to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance, he shall neither go astray nor shall be distressed. So now this Allah is informing Adam that guidance is going to come to you and to your species. So guidance is coming to the species of humanity in the form of what? What is this guidance now? Revelation. Good. Revelation. Revelation in the form of? Of a book. Revelation in the form of? A sunnah. Yes. Please. And it says that us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put them down and from, took them from paradise and put them on earth. Mm -hmm. Is there a ikhtilat, is there a difference of opinion whether that place that, that they were in, or was the dinner that we all will try to obtain, or was that just a dinner for God? Excellent. You are a couple of pages ahead of us. Good. So, so that's what you mentioned in the discussion. We'll ask, but we'll wait till we get to a point here. So now, we know that Adam was created from clay. from clay, from black mud, from surface earth, right? And as, as we, uh, inshallah, will learn, that Allah took earth from the different corners of the earth. He took different color surface earth. And all of that was inside of, inside of Adam, which is why different colors came forth from him, right? 
our different, uh, what eventually becomes our varying colors and ethnicities. The word Adam itself, interestingly enough, who asked? The word Adam itself means what? Good, right. The word the word Adam itself means to be of a darker hue. The word Adam means black, right? In an oversimplified expression. But the word Adam means to be dark skinned. That's what the name means. Okay? Good. Now, if he is created from the surface earth. This might seem to indicate that he was where when he was created? On earth. On earth. So if he is created on earth, yet our Lord is referring to the place where he is as paradise. Is the paradise where Adam and Hawaii were different than the paradise that we hope to be going to in the hereafter? Or is it all one in the same place? What do we think? We understand a lot of thought here. We understand what's going on. Say it again. Yes. No, I was going to say that, that, that from your perspective, when the, the question you're asking, I guess you're going to get to it later. We're going to get to it. Yeah. The difference is, is people bring truth for why they think that. I, don't, I never heard anybody thought it was a paradise of God in here. They just thought it was a paradise of Father God somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think it was ever. Anybody, any, any, anybody from, from a scholastic standpoint thought that God was here on the earth. Mm -hmm. But but it was a separate God other than the one that we're going to go to, the paradise that we're striving for. That, 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 that there's evidence that would indicate, mm -hmm. based on some of the descriptions that the law has given, mm -hmm. that can't happen in paradise. Mm -hmm. It happens during this event between the police and um, Adam that would give you an indication that it ain't that. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Like for example, I'm going to get ready to close the cell while we be on our time. But for example, in Jannah, is there disobedience to Allah in Jannah in paradise? No. So if there's no disobedience to Allah in paradise, then how could Adam and Hawa have disobeyed? If paradise is reserved for those who are near to Allah and pleasing to Him, how is the police there in the first place? We, we understand it. So this brings scholarship into a space of now uh, examining this and attempting to look at the particulars. Okay. Uh, ultimately, ultimately, when it comes to matters of Akhida, when it comes to matters of theology, when it comes to matters of the unseen, because these are all matters of the unseen. In time and space, these are matters of the unseen. Time-wise, because it was way back then. Space-wise, it's not here with us now, right? The only way we can have certain knowledge of this is if Allah informs us specifically. But if Allah does not inform us specifically, then the best that we can do is examine the indicators that are present in Scripture and then attempt to weigh them out, weigh out the possibilities of which one may be preposterous. Okay. But whosoever turns away from my reminder, verily for him is the life of hardship. And we shall raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. He will say, Oh my Lord, why have you raised me up blind while I had sight? Allah will say, Like this, our signs came to you, but you disregarded them. And so this day, you will be neglected. So in our next sitting, inshallah, we continue on uh, with these verses, but we're going to now begin concluding. These verses that have come concerning this portion of the story of Adam. And we're going to now begin to look at uh, how scholarship has understood all these verses that we have just conveyed to you all. How they've understood them, what are they extracting from them, do they differ on some points, uh, how are they differing, which one is more convincing. All of this we'll be getting into next week, inshallah. If there are questions on what we've covered, please feel free. I mean, we had a discourse throughout. Yes. Me? Yes, take on. Okay. Um, you read that uh, when Allah told Adam and Eve to get it down here, and he would put uh, animosity in between them. Mm -hmm. um, can you expand on that animosity? Yeah. You read that in there. Mm -hmm. So so now we have to we should understand. Well he, here's the first thing.
So gin is not synonymous with bad. The same way that human is not synonymous with bad. Right? Um, well, we mentioned last week in the chapter. So